Are you bored of your sweeper patch you're playing and you want to spice it up a little bit? Maybe make it a little bit more modern and fusion-esque with some 7 arpeggios? Then this attitude is the right one for you. Here we go. Hey guitar champion, what's going on? I'm Justin Hombach back from our practice cave and the etude that you have just heard is one from the new add-on of my online sweep picking masterclass called the Then of Sweep Picking. In today's video we have the etude and in a few seconds comes the full lesson of this etude. But if you want to have more than 14 different etudes as well and exclusive lessons about sweep picking, about different sweep shapes and the sweep mechanics, as well as tabs and backing tracks for your own journey, then check out the link in the description box and get the then of sweep picking. All right, I would say let's learn, practice and master today's sweep picking etude. Here we go. All right, etude number 14. Let's take a look at the chord progression again. The chord goes like this. We're starting with E minor seven. Going to G7, going to C major 7, and then we're playing a 2 5 1 in E minor, which means F sharp diminished, B7, and again to E minor 7. Maybe this chord progression sounds familiar for you. Yes, because it's based on a really famous song. Sunny! Yesterday my life was filled with pain. Oh, Sunny, you smile, blah, 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 I don't know the lyrics. Oh, dark days are gone, and bright days are here. Ba -da -da -ba -da 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 and so on. Yes, Sunny from Bobby Hep was his name, I believe. Could be wrong here. I don't know, but it's a cool 70s disco song and one of my favorite fusion songs to improvise over and I love to take this chord progression too. Yeah, made etude number 14 out of it. All right, let's check out the sweeps here. We're starting with this ascending E minor 7 sweep of you. And then sliding up to the next inversion. Now here's the fingering a little bit different than I showed to you in the last video because we're sliding with our pinky. But usually when I play this one as a standalone, I use my ring finger here on the E string. Okay, after this E minor 7, a bit shape we're going to G dominant 7. And here again we're starting with a descending shape. Sorry, this one here. And then we're sliding to the next shape. All right, together with the E minor. Then we're going to three strings, three major shapes, C major. Another version of the C major 3 string sweep of shape. And then we're going to F sharp half diminished. And B7. But here we are playing the full diminished now over B7, creating a B7 flat 9. Please check out again the full diminished arpeggio, uh, full diminished chapter that I've made in the first few etudes. And the full 5 string diminished shape, let's take a look at this one again, goes like this. Eleven, eight, ten, 
So we're going from F sharp half diminished to B7 flat 9 representing through the F sharp full diminished arpeggio. And then we are again in E minor 7, playing again our first shape. But not sliding up the fretboard, we are sliding down the fretboard to this shape. So we have. Now I take this G dominant shape here and sequencing it a little bit more interesting rhythmically so it sounds like this. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then sliding up to the next inversion where we are filling the rest of the bar with this G dominant sweep shape. 13, 10, 12, 12, 10. Again, the G dominant. Then again, C major 7, we have the same like in the repetition before that. Again, F sharp half diminished. And now again, the um, full diminished chord moving up the fretboard. Now again, the cool thing about the diminished, the full diminished is that it's symmetrical, so we can move it up three frets and we have the same fingering. Three frets higher, we have again the same fingering. So it doesn't matter which inversion we're using, we always have the same fingering. And we are taking this here as well. And now we're playing this really cool sequence. which showcase that we have the note G in nearly every chord. The G in E is the minor third, the G in G is the root, the G in C is the fifth, and then we have to move to the F sharp for the F sharp half diminished. But first we're playing E minor seven, going to G dominant seven, where we only have to move one note, the index finger from the 12th to the 13th spread. How cool is that? Then we're going to C major 7. And then we're going to 3 string uh, F sharp half diminished. And full diminished. Moving this one again up the fretboard. Now comes another really cool sequence that I copied and stole from a piano player, from, an, um, yeah, from a bebop piano player named Oscar Peterson. And it goes like this. Then we have again two full diminished sweep up picture shapes. Again after that three frets higher to get to the next inversion. And resolving to the root note. Alright, let me play etude 14 again for you slow. E minor 7, sliding to the next inversion. G dominant 7, sliding to the next inversion. C major, three strings from a picture shape. F sharp half diminished. F sharp full diminished. Re representing B dominant 7 flat 9. We're talking about this in the next chapter a little bit more. Alright, again E minor 7. Sliding to the down to the uh, inversion below that. Then the sequence of G dominant 7. Sorry. Then again C major 7. Again, F sharp half diminished, F sharp full diminished, and then the sequence E minor 7, G dominant 7, C major 7, F sharp half diminished, F sharp full diminished, and then, uh, sorry, E minor 7, E dominant, E major, and then two full diminished arpeggios. <laughs> Again. This makes a lot of fun 
and I wish you also a lot of fun learning, practicing and mastering the next attitude, attitude number 14. I'm going to see you in the next chapter. Cheers! Uh -huh.